I'm not going to say that I'm just a personal trainer because I'm not. I'm a friend. I'm a. a, a I am the, per, the the listener. I'm the wall to punch. I'm the the hug. I'm the embrace. I'm the kick butt in your face, like screaming like a boot camp instructor. I'm I play so many different roles when I'm in a gym. My name is Josh, and I live in St. Petersburg, Florida, and I've been a trainer for four and a half years. I don't remember which day of the week it was, but when I when I get when I when I get done, I always just grab my stuff and leave. I always do. I don't like staying around the gym unless I'm working out, and chances of me working out is very slim, you know, at that time of day. I'm like, I, I've had enough. I just want to go home. So I end up walking towards the front of the gym, and I see this girl that I've I've seen before. I met uh, at the church a long time ago, and I know that she's had an eating disorder. I've known that. Um, so I, I, I kind of motioned to her that I wanted to talk to her and, you know, we were laughing about, you know, how's the weather doing, How, how's, how's work doing, you know, all these like, you know, filler questions that I'm, you know, hoping that, you know, she can just kind of like get to the, get, we can get to the meat of the conversation is, how is your body, how are you doing, how, how's your physical, your emotional, psychological, spiritual, all that stuff, how are you doing? So uh, I want you to trust me on this, I said. And she says, uh, what? So I want you to stay right here. Don't move. I'm going to round to my car. I'm going to get a video. And I want, I want to watch it with you. And she says, oh, OK, OK. So I ran out to my car. You know, I'm, I'm thinking, how, how am I going to reason with her, like saying, you know, this is, I'm not crazy. I'm really not crazy. I'm just telling you that I don't have any reason why I'm showing you this video. All I know is that it was on my heart to do it. She's sitting over here, I'm sitting over here, and then he starts talking about the amount of breathing that we're supposed to do, and you know, 99 percent of our, our energy should come from our oxygen, and you know, we spend so much time breathing up here instead of down here, and the amount of oxygen that we get is so limited, that's why anxiety and all this other stuff, and I'm like thinking to myself, wow, this is cool because both her and I have this in common, we know about the human body, we know the importance of breathing. And I'm kind of looking in my peripheral vision, you know, you know I'm, I'm staring at the TV, I'm looking over here and I can see her going. And then she leans back and she gets really comfortable and she's going, hmm. When I find that there are useful tools, like, like, like let's just say Numa, all the different videos that I've ever watched, it, it's such a profound way of explaining that, you know, there's more to the Bible than just pages and words. There's more to going to church than just going to church and getting a message and going home. When he said, when you're breathing, you're essentially saying the name of God. I saw her breathing just kind of increase and increase and increase. Like it was like, oh, the importance of breathing. I got to bring in God. I got to bring in God. God's going to make everything better. I didn't know what demons she was dealing with, but I can only imagine what she was going through when she was realizing that when she can actually purge, in a, in a literal sense, all of the, the bad baggage that she has inside of her as a person because we all carry it around it's just we don't know that we have we have a release button and that's to exhale so told her that I was really appreciative that she trusted me gave her a hug and um, I didn't see her for maybe for maybe a year a year and a half but she was glowing like she like she should and I can only imagine that maybe it played a role that moment <laughs>